Hey, how's it going? It's Sam Frost here with some more digital marketing advice. In today's short video, I want to talk about the Performance Max campaign type in Google Ads and whether or not it's kind of all it's cracked up to be. So if you use Google Ads for your business, you've probably noticed Google trying to push you towards creating a Performance Max campaign, which is effectively Google's most kind of up-to-date and most automated campaign type. And the idea is that you bring in things like product data feed, you bring in assets, so headlines, text descriptions, images, all those kind of things. And, and Google basically takes all your assets and you don't have to do a lot of the targeting. Most of it's done for you by Google. They're gonna go and try and find you customers. And oftentimes when you run performance max campaigns, particularly for e-commerce, the performance can look really, really strong in terms of return on ad spend or ROAS perspective. So you're putting in a dollar, you're getting $5 back or $10 back or something like that. And at a headline level, that can look fantastic. But what I encourage you to do is dig a bit deeper into the numbers, look through your Performance Max campaigns, look at the insights that are provided. There is also some more sophisticated tools or systems you can use, sometimes outside of the main Google Ads interface where you're importing data in order to actually better understand what Google is actually doing with your campaigns. Because the whole problem with Performance Max, in my view, is although it can be quite good at generating return on ad spend, and that's what Google leans on, the whole sort of sales proposition, value proposition from their perspective is that you can go and easily and quickly set up a largely automated campaign that shows a very clear positive return, particularly for e-commerce advertisers, but even for lead generation. You know, it's not uncommon to see in an account the Performance Max campaign generating the highest volume of leads. But the issue is it's a very much a black box. You don't really know what's actually going on under the bonnet, under the hood of this campaign. Google doesn't give you all of the data you need to really make a hugely informed decision as to whether or not the campaign is working as well as you think. And that's because what can happen with Performance Max is a lot of the campaign activity is branded search and also very aggressive retargeting. And the thing with branded search and aggressive retargeting is there are justifications for these activities. They can work very, very well but in the example of branded search, right, somebody who's looking up your brand, they may have already effectively decided to buy from you, but they decided to buy from you from some other interaction they've had with your company, word of mouth, or they saw a billboard, or they saw a Facebook post you made, or something like that. And when you go and then have a customer Google your brand name and click on the Performance Max campaign and go and purchase, all that's happening is that Performance Max campaign is effectively winning the reward or taking the credit for a purchase that was going to happen anyway. And that's why often when it comes to branded search, what I encourage advertisers to do is actually run branded search if they're gonna do it in a completely standalone campaign where you can really track, you know, what's it costing you, what are you getting out of it, and you understand the impacts. Same with aggressive retargeting. What Google's trying to do a little bit with Performance Max, in my view, is kind of sell worse performing advertising that's masked with the better performing advertising in terms of, you know, lead generation and conversion rates and, and sales return on ad spend and all those kind of things. If you ever watched the movie The Big Short, you might recall that scene where they uh, you know, explain the kind of complexities of all those mortgage-backed securities. Maybe you even read the book or you, you know, sort of studied the history of the financial crisis. And if you recall, they sort of give an explanation of how the good products, the mortgage securities that were higher quality were mixed in with the really bad ones. And once you mixed in the good stuff with the bad stuff, you could basically hide what was going on with the bad stuff. And that's where all of the uh, problems in that financial crisis stemmed from. Same thing goes a bit with Performance Max in my view. You know, what Google is able to do is hide under performing activity or inventory that you don't necessarily want to purchase and then make it look like things are performing really well. Now that's not to say there is no value in testing and trying performance max, and there are steps you can take, like restricting brand search and so on, that will make the campaign more truthful performance-wise, but they're often more advanced steps. What I find is that advertisers generally just run the campaigns, they do what Google tells them to do, it's generating what looks like a great headline figure, and that's what Google wants, because they want you to go into your account and be like, hey, why do I bother with normal search or normal shopping or normal display ads when I can just give Google pretty much total control, give them a budget, and for every dollar I spend, I get $10 back, ignoring the fact that maybe of that $10 return, the vast majority of it is coming from people who probably would have bought from you anyway, or not finding you new customers. It's just aggressively retargeting to people who've already been on your site. So keen to hear your take on it. Performance Max is probably worth testing. The other thing I will say is my experience has generally been for lead generation. Performance Max is very poor in terms of the lead quality, so do be wary of that. But once again, you can test that. Keen to hear your take. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time.